ready, right, Gabby? Yes. Yeah. So we have six classes left. Oh shit. Wow. So, um, <laughs> Evelyn, we have six classes left. No, oh. six weeks left. Twelve classes. That's it. That's it. So in, the amount of, in that amount of time, we're going to have... Oh, boy, you ready for this? Hi, guys. So in this six weeks, we're going to have a final exam. We're going to have one test. And we're going to have one quiz. Not sure exactly when those are going to happen right now. Let's we'll see how it goes. But I'll make sure to let you know ahead of time. But that's all we have left. It's going to go pretty quick. This is what we're going to do today. And it's chapter 3.1. And it ties into what we did last week. Do you remember what we did last week, Hako? The, it was the number line, right? But then it didn't come on Thursday. Oh, yeah, no, no. It was basically the same thing, a continuation of it. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody have questions from Thursday? No? Beartooth isn't here to ask us questions. Hmm. All right. Marlene, let's talk about Thursday just to kind of refresh our memory because it is tying into this, okay? Okay? Okay. So what we had to do on Thursday, we had to solve and graph something like negative mm, 6 less than 2x mm, minus plus 3 is less than, mm, I don't know, mm, So we had to solve and graph something like that. So the trick was, the thing that, that I'm hoping you guys understand, Eileen, is this. Is that a graph is a picture of all solutions. Because if you understand that, then you're going to understand a whole bunch of math forever and ever and ever more. Forever and ever and ever more. Amen. So Gabby, when we're graphing what we're doing, drawing a picture. Because the thing is, like if we had something like this, maybe you remember this, maybe you don't, there's lots of answers to this. Like 4.01, 27, 42, 3,100, oh, 3, 3, 24, 28, 92, 3, 7, 8, 1.4, <laughs> right? Any number that's bigger than 4 would be a solution to that. And so the, the idea was, Jackie, you can't write them all. So what we do instead, we draw a picture. That's four. Let's see. X is bigger. Bigger numbers are this way, right? So then our graph would look like that. Yeah? Yeah, Daniela? You sure, Daniela? Gabby, you remember that? Okay. This was just kind of strange because when we solved, we had to do it all in all three areas. We'd have to subtract 3 from all three parts. Because this would make negative 9. 2x plus 3 minus 3 is 2x and that makes 6. Then we would divide all three parts by 2. So that's negative 4 and a half and that is, oops, 3. So then the graph would look like And this was a solid dot. That's a circle. So Oscar, we're good with all that, right? Yeah. So just to make sure, Oscar, what we're saying with this graph, what this means, like the way you read it, Gabby, is answers here, where the line is. No line means no answers. So none over here and none over here. All the answers are in between, nothing else anywhere. And then the line tells you where the answers are. Yeah, yeah? You okay, Jackie? Yeah, it's been a long day. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand, Jackie. 
So Jackie, today is a really, really important lesson. Is it? Mm -hmm. We're going to spend a lot of time on this chapter, chapter three. And today is like the start, it's the foundation. So if you can get today, if you can understand today really well, then the rest of the chapter will go really good. Okay, Evelyn? Okay. So what we're going to do, Evelyn, is we're going to graph, which means we're going to draw a picture of all the answers to an equation that actually makes a straight line. But there's not going to be one variable like this. There's actually two variables, y and x. Listo, Marlene? Oh, oh, yes, ma'am. Didn't we have to flip the sign when it's negative? Uh, only if you're dividing by a negative. So we divided by positive 2, so you don't have to. Oh, that one. Yeah, and it doesn't matter that this was already negative, because we're dividing by positive 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you asked. That's the tricky part, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Evelyn, you doing okay over there? Yeah, I was. I don't know. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Okay, Evelyn. Evelyn, check this out. <sighs> Ready? Watch this. Watch. Here's what our equation is going to look like. We're going to have an x and we're going to have a y. So it might be something like this. x, that's supposed to say x plus y equals... Jackie, what do you want it to equal? 10. 10. Fantastic. So this is the equation we're going to have. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be graphing it. What's a graph again, Gabby? I forgot already. Crap. Ugh. Sometimes I feel like my brain is an Etch-a-Sketch. Do you know what those are? The little toys with the knobs. It's red. Toys with the knobs. It's got a little screen. You draw on it and it draws things in the sand. You can shake it up and it disappears. Sometimes my brain feels like that. Like I'll get something that's brand new and it's like I shake my head and it's gone. Right? And sometimes with those, you can spend a long time drawing that picture and then gone. Math is like that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, wait, what's a graph again, Gabby? Something about a picture. Something about a picture. That's true. A picture of what? All the answers. And yeah, so a graph is a picture of all the answers. Jackie, what's makes something an answer versus something not an answer? Yeah, you're on the right track. So what would you look for? Well, so I guess the question, let me ask you a different question. Kind of the same thing. What's the difference between a solution and an answer? I can give you an example outside of math. Say you were sleepy, you're tired, because you haven't been sleeping well. So your answer to make yourself not sleepy is to take a hammer and smash your thumb. Yeah, you wouldn't be sleepy, would you? It's probably not a solution, though, is it? Because it just creates another problem. It doesn't make your problem go away. Uh, so the difference between an answer and a solution, here's what we're looking for. Can you read that, Jacobo? A solution makes the equation true. OK? Yolanda, do you remember doing these kinds of things ever, or no? Doing what kinds of things? These kinds of equations? I'm sure, yeah. But not really? A long time ago. Okay. So, Yolanda, you see how we have an x and we have a y? That means that our solutions are going to look like x comma y x comes before y in the alphabet, so we put the x first and the y second. So an example of a solution for this would be a really easy one is 5 comma 5. Because that's true, because that says x is 5 and that says y is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. What's up, Bear Tooth? How you doing? Fantastic. Hmm. What's another solution? Eileen, you got one? Well, come on, I'm going to call on you in 30 seconds. Okay, so you got to get a, a solution to this. That means that you have to find a number and another number that add up to 10. That's it. Y. 
I already got five. Mm -hmm. What's that? Eight two. Would that work? Eight comma two? Yeah, yeah, that would work. Okay, what else? Oh wait. I mean. How about six four? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh seven three. Okay, that's good. What about what if eleven was x? What would y have to be? Negative one. Okay. What if? Okay, these are the two important ones right here. What if x was 0? What would y have to be? 10. 10. Now, here's my other question. What if y was 0? 10. 10. These are important. These two right here, muy importante. That's a cow's favorite word in Spanish, by the way, Daniela. Muy. Uh -huh. Right, Gabby? Yes. Yes. Those are the two most important ones. Mm, what if what if x was one half? Oh crap! X was one half. Huh. Oscar, you know what the other what y would have to be? Nine and one half. Oh yeah, it's really not that bad, is it? No. no. What if x was four? Oh my gosh, point three. Ay ay ay. X was four point three. What would it be? 5.7? 5.7 .7 .7 or 6.7? 6.7. 5.7, you're right. Well, yeah. Yeah, 5.7 oh. because it's going to, the 0.7 and the 0.3 make 0 and yeah. you have the whole one, right? And then, yeah, yeah. How many answers are there to this? Wow. Forever, right? Infinitely many, right. And Ernesto, you got the idea, right? You cannot... You can try if you want, but you can't write all the answers. Jackie, are there a million answers? More. But are there a million at least? Yes. Yeah. Jackie, if you could write one answer every second, okay? So one answer every second, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five. How long? I know it's going to be a million seconds, but how long would it take you to write one million answers? To if you were doing one answer a second, you know how long a million seconds would take? No. no? Anybody know? So if you were able to write one answer every second without stopping, how long would it take to get to a million? I know it's a million seconds, but that doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. So in a unit of time that makes sense, what do you think, Bear Tooth? Just take a guess. What does a, what does a million seconds feel like to you? I promise this is math. I swear. It's going somewhere. Can't Google it, Oscar. No cheating. <laughs> a minute? Well, that would be 60 seconds, right? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. No, no, no worries. It's just a guess. It's just a guess. What do you think, Akobo? Five hours. Five hours. Okay. What do, you, what do you think, Yolanda? A day. A day. Eileen, how long do you think a million seconds is? <laughs> Half an hour? Okay. Uh, I am Marlene. You can't Google it. How long do you think, Marlene, that one million seconds would be? A million seconds. How long do you think that is? One million seconds, yeah. A week? Yeah. What about you, Jackie? A couple days. A couple days. Gabby? A few hours. What do you think, Oscar? Two weeks. <laughs> it is right. It uh, a day. A day. Yeah. So then, let me ask you another question. Similar, right? How long do you think, given your answer for a million, how long do you think a billion would take? So you're going to do one answer every second until you make a billion answers. How long would that take? What do you think? A year, I guess. A year? What do you think, Daniela? How long would a billion? Wait, you didn't answer a million. How long do you think a million seconds would take, Daniela? Oh, and that reminds me, your brother was bringing cookies, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you said, I didn't even coerce you into that one. You said it on your own last time. That's true. That's true. Anyway, Daniela, how long do you think a million seconds would take? Like, just guess. You don't have to, I mean, 
It's just a guess. Like, how long does it feel like it would take? A week? How long would a billion take, you think, then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a month. Okay, Gabby, what about you? How how long is a billion gonna take? <laughs> Two weeks. What about Jackie? Uh, a month. A month. And how long did you say a million took? Oh uh, no, a couple weeks. A couple weeks. The other one I said a couple days. A couple days, a couple weeks. Okay. And what about you, Yolanda? I guess uh, ten days. Ten days. Okay. Uh, Eileen. What do you got for a billion? <laughs> okay. Marlene? IDK. A year. A year? Okay. <laughs> and uh, Beartooth, what about you? Doesn't make, it's, it doesn't even make sense, right? A billion? Oscar, what about you for the billion? One year. A year? Okay. A week and a year, right? Two weeks and a year, right? Two weeks and a year. Okay. So the truth is we can only make sense of numbers that are around 120, 150. After that, it becomes abstract. abstract. Even people. Like we can only keep track of around 100 to 150 people. And after that, it's just like a group. And then we don't see them as individuals anymore. Turns out a million seconds is about 11 days. So if you were to count one, two, every second count a number, it would take you 11 days to get to one million, approximately. And a billion? You want to change your guess for a billion? Mm -hmm. A million is 11 days. So how long do you think a billion? You can't Google it. How long do you think a billion would be if it's 11 days for one million? 20 years. 20 years? <laughs> really? 11 days to 20 years? That's a huge jump. What do you think? 23 what? Days. Wait, 23 days? So a little more than twice as much? Yeah, a little more. What do you think, Beartooth? Around there. Around there? Mm, what's Yolanda say? What, how long did you say it would take on a million? 11 days. 11 days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's say four months. Four months. So a million is 11 days. A billion is about 32 years. 32? <laughs> yeah, 32 <laughs> years. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, you got to think. You got to think about it. Like, like a million is this number, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you were pretty close. And here's, here's a billion. If you have 1,000 million, that's 1 billion. So if you're a billionaire, if you have a $1 billion, that means that you became a millionaire 1,000 times. If you became a trillionaire, that means you became first a millionaire 1 million times. Yeah, right? Kind of crazy. It, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Okay, Jackie. Jackie, big numbers are very confusing, right, Jackie? Mm -hmm. Jackie, let me ask you a question. Yeah. First, this is kind of weird, okay? And this, I swear this is math, I promise. I'm trying to get you to think about numbers, and then we'll get back to this in just a second. We'll tie in, I promise, you'll see. Okay. So here's my question. Um, do, you know, do you know the difference between our galaxy and the universe? No? So our galaxy, there's a group of stars that are around some central thing, and our, our star is in this group. Okay? So when we look up in the sky, mostly what we see are stars in our galaxy. But then there's all kinds of other galaxies, too. And we can see some of them, like with our bare eye. Okay? Yeah? Did you know that? Yeah. So what do you think is more? The number of grains of sand on the entire planet Earth or the number of stars in our galaxy? Seven. Probably because I'm asking it's the number of stars in our galaxy, right? Really? Yeah. There's more stars in our galaxy than there is grains of sand on Earth. Wow. And there's more galaxies 
than there are stars in our galaxy. That's weird. So, numbers. Confusing, huh, Gabby? Mr. Bond, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a La Migra joke or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're oh. talking about like, the galaxy. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I don't know. I mean, if the inf if the universe is infinite, then there has to be. Then, if if it goes on forever, then there has to be something life on something else. Right. right. If it goes on forever. Yeah. But what if it's just a black piece of paper with holes poked in it? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, Daniela. Daniela, there are infinite answers to this. You could never write them all. We could uh, we could not even write the number of answers um, between five five and five point one and four point nine. We couldn't even write all those because the decimals get smaller and smaller and smaller. So you could spend thirty two years writing one billion answers, and for every one of those answers, there would be another billion answers. You could never write them, so we don't even try. Okay, well that's why we graph. Right? Because it gives us a way. We can just look at all the answers. We can write them all. And if you have a graph, you can just look. Jackie, do you know what this is called that I'm drawing right here? Do you know what that's called, Jackie? No. Mm. Mm. We're going to draw a graph on that. What is it? Line graph. Ooh, no. We're going to draw a line graph on this. There's a name for this. You guys know that this is called the x-axis? This is called the y-axis. Did you know that? Did you know that the x is called the input? And the y is called the output? Did you know that? Did you know that, Marlene? In the center, right here, it has a coordinate 0, 0. Did you know that? And it's called the origin. Eileen, why do they call it the origin? Can I ask you an easier question? What's origin mean? Well, that's where something comes from. That's where it starts. I bet you guys don't know the origin of the tortilla chip. Hmm. What do you think, Gabby? Where do tortilla chips come from? Other than heaven. You know, where do tortilla chips come from? They're made by angels, I'm sure. Where was the first place that a tortilla chip was probably not made? because they were probably made all over the place, right? But sold. Where was the first place that a tortilla chip was sold for, for somebody to buy? What do you think? <laughs> a store? Did you say a store, Marlene? That's true. In which city in the world do you think this store was? Yeah, which one? Just take a guess. Which store? Uh, which city do you think the store was in? What's that? I'll even let you guess a country. I don't know. Africa? No. It was actually the first place a tortilla chip was sold was in Phoenix, Arizona. Yep. There was an old lady who worked there, and uh, her hands were getting bad. Her tortillas looked like the tortillas I make, and they looked like the continent of Africa. You know, like... Right? <laughs> all ugly. and So she took all the ugly ones and cut them up and deep fried them. And then the boss like found out what she was doing and loved them, and they stopped making tortillas and started selling the chips instead. And it's cheaper because you don't have to. It doesn't matter how ugly they are, right? You're going to cut them up and fry them. Yeah. True story, Evelyn. Evelyn, the origin is where something starts. Okay? And if we were going to put this number... This, this solution on the graph, we start here. Mm -hmm. We count this one first. X goes first, Y goes second. You see X comma Y? So we would do like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be the X. Mm -hmm. And the Y would be up 5, so the 5, 5 would be right there. Do you see? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. See why I talked about the origin? That's where you start. Okay. And uh, do you guys know what quadrants are? Oh, crap. Quadrants. Quadrants. Quad is quadrants. Quad. Quad. Four. Quad. Quad is four. Quad is four. Your quadricep has four major strands. 
Yeah, quadricep. Uh, you ride a quad, it's got four wheels. It's called a four-wheeler. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Quad, four. One, two, three, four. That's how it goes. This is quadrant one. And this is quadrant two. And this is quadrant number three. And this is quadrant number four. Can't forget that. You should write that down. So that way when you study, you can look at it and see it. Because you've forgotten that before, right, Jackie? Yeah. See, I got your back, sister. I always think that was one. Yeah. I know. It starts top right as one. And then it goes counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four. All right. Now, huh. 11, negative 1. I'm going to do this one right here. 1, let's see, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, negative 1. 11, negative 1 would be right there. So this would be 5, 5. And this would be 11, negative 1. Let's see, 6, 4. 6, 4 would be right there. And 7, 3 would be right there. And 8, 2 would be right there. Do you see they line up? These kinds of equations, they're called linear because their graphs, their answers, form a straight line. That's why they're called linear. The graphs make a line. Ernesto, all the graphs we're going to do for quite a while are all going to be straight lines. So if you get some points and they don't match, with a line, then you made a mistake. Whoa. Evelyn, how do we get these points again? Oh, crap, I forgot. Yeah, so the, these points come from these, right? Yeah. That's true, that's true. Oh, where do those come from? Crap. You? Nope. They didn't come, this one came from me. This one came from, no. Oh, no. Mm, this is the only one that came from me. Huh. Oh, that's true. No, that's not half. That's like one-tenth. <laughs> where'd those come from? Jackie, where'd those come from? From what? But where'd you get them? From magic. From magic. From magic. How'd you get them? What are, what are these? Ring? All of these have something in common. What do all of, they all add up to 10. So X plus Y equals 10 x plus y equals 10 for all of these. These are all solutions to this equation. In other words, a solution is a value for x and y that would make this true. So any of these, you could plug in x, you could plug in y, and they would add up to make 10. Yeah, Gabby? And so, if we were to, look, this is hand drawn, so it's not going to be perfect, but if we were to connect a los puntos like this right here, watch, see, look, Oh, shut straight line. It's ugly because I drew it by hand, but it's your fault. I confess it's Jacobo's fault. But that's what we're going to do. Now, it's a hand-drawn graph, and so it's ugly. It doesn't quite work. But I want to show you this. See, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. See, that would be 0, 10 right there. Do you see? Hmm. Yeah? Okay, hold on, I'm going to... Hold on, let's see here. Watch, I want to show you this right here. I'm going to I'm gonna show you a friend. Watch this. D-E-S-M-O-S.com. Ah! Oh, I hate my life. D-E-S-M-O-S.com. There we go. You should write down Desmos.com. It can save your life. It can really, really help you. You could actually do your homework for you, but that'd be dumb because you won't be able to use it on a test. Yeah, there's a, they actually make a really nice app, and it's free, and it's really, really powerful. Okay, so here's what I want to show you. X plus Y equals DS. Here's our graph. Do you see? Do you see how X is 0 right here, and Y is 10, and X is 10, and Y is 0? And then I'm going to just put my cursor somewhere, like right here. See? 3, 7. 3 plus 7 is 10. And, oh, let's see. Well, let's do this one right here. 15 plus negative 5 is 10 also. And then, let's see. I'm going to go way over here. Oh, boy. Wow. 
Okay. Uh, oh, look at that. Fifth, negative 15,000 for x and positive 15,000 and 10 for y. Those two numbers add up to 10. You see, they all make a straight line. Do you see, Gabby? So, Gabby, here's the thing I'm trying to get you to see. Okay. Ready? We're gonna we're gonna make some some facts. Math is lit facts. Okay, ready? Math is lit. Okay, Jackie, fact number one. A linear equation. These are the things you gotta know. Makes a straight line. Are we good with that? So when you're doing your homework, Yolanda, or you're taking a quiz, if you get some, if you get something that looks like this, right? You got a point here, and you have a point here. Two points is enough to make a line, but not enough to check. You really need three. If three line up, you're good. So if you have two, and then you have a third over here, uh, you're wrong. Something's bad. Evelyn, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's why this is an important idea. So your graphs are going to be straight lines. Okay. Here's how you graph. Here's what you got to do. There's all kinds of ways to do this, but ultimately what you're always doing is you're finding three solutions. And then conecta los puntos. The best, the most, not the best, the most important Eileen, mean, this is really, really important. I'm glad you're here today. The most important letter in puntos is the N. It's the most important letter in the word puntos. Right, Jacobo? Yeah. Right. Well, if you got rid of the N... Uh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, Yolanda. I'm sorry. I know, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jackie, will you forgive me? Yeah. You've heard that joke how many times, Jackie? More than I can count. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So, but that's the idea. You're going to have an equation, and you have to find three solutions. And then you put those on the graph, and you connect the dots, and you're done. Okay? Does that make sense? That's it. I mean, that's like the big, big idea. Those are the things that we got to get today. Now, uh, there's two things I want you to know right here for sure, okay? The first one's called, it's about something called intercepts. Intercepts are where your line crosses the x or y axis. You knew that, right, Gabby? You knew that, right, Gabby? Your intercepts are where your line crosses the x or the y axis. Okay? And here's the thing you got to know about that. Check this out. Can you get it? Oh, yeah. There. Now, can you see that? Right? So, you guys know this is x, and you know that's y, right? Oscar, there's no numbers on here, right? Okay. So, here's what I want to show you. Oh, my good lord. When you make the sound, it helps. Okay? So, go ahead and draw that. Watch. I want to show you something. Watch. 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 Mira. This one right here is called the y-axis. Sorry. The y-intercept. Okay? Right there, that's called the y-intercept. Because that's where this graph, this line, crosses the y-axis. And then that makes this one right here the x-intercept. Beartooth, we're good with that. Okay, here's the connection. Ready, Beartooth? Okay, check this out. 
do you know what y equals right here? Because you know how this is a coordinate, right? The x comma y, right? Do you know what y equals right here? <coughs> Me either. Do you know anything about y, though, right here? So this is a number for y. This is a number right here. This this place, yeah. it's like it's like actually these coordinates, like these x's and y's, they're actually like addresses. I don't know if you know how this works, but like you know, not so much in 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 small towns. In small towns, that you have an address and your street name, that's it, right? But like if you're in a city, um, you might have an address that would be on say Broadway, but it will be on East or West Broadway. Did you know that? So it'll be on East or West Broadway, Broadway, and and that's that's actually a location because the East will tell you how far left or right, and Broadway will tell you how far up or down. In fact, a lot of new cities, they actually have a number, and then um, a North or a number and a South. That's it. And it's actually like a location on a coordinate plane. The whole map, the whole city will be made, made like a map. So, hmm. I'm saying from this graph right here, from right now, even though there's no numbers, you should be able to tell me something about y, some property of y right here. It's gotta be a positive. Ida lo que genio. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Y is positive. How do you know that? How do you know y is positive right there? So, yeah. So this is zero zero. Yeah. Above is plus, below is minus. Mm -hmm. Down here is negative y, and up here is positive y. So you're right. So this is y, and it's positive, right? <laughs> Man, you want to go for two for two? Okay, let's see. There's something that you can tell me about x, right here. In fact, I think you can figure out exactly what number x is right here. Uh huh. We can't tell what number y is. We can only tell if it's positive or negative. Yeah. But we can tell exactly what number x is right here. Ernesto, how do you say big zero in Spanish? Don't know? Me either. I'm white. I'm just trying to learn. Yeah. But it's zero. Yeah. Everywhere on the y axis, x is equal to zero. So. Here's the idea. If you have a, a y-intercept, x is 0. This is a big idea. Oh, there we go. Ready, Ready, Jacobo? Yeah. Big idea. For all y-intercepts, x equals 0. The reason, Daniela, this is a big deal is you're going to be given a graph, and you don't want to have to do a whole bunch of work to find a bunch of answers. Sometimes you can just find the y-intercept, and you can find the x-intercept, and then you can connect the los puntos, and you're done. <laughs> so that's like a shortcut you can use sometimes. Gabby, check this out, Gabby. Right here, x is going to be negative, but no matter what, for the x-intercept, y is always 0. These are so important. Oscar, you could get tattoos mm -hmm. of these. You could get tattoos of those. That's how important they are. Yep. You going to get a tattoo of that, Marlene? Yeah? That's going to be awesome. That's going to be good. So we're going to come back to this in a minute. Now, the other thing I wanted you to know, OK? Dang. Oh. And then we're going to have you guys do some work. Oh, boy. So check this out. Jackie, this is the x-axis right here, correct? There's 
There's that's a line, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's actually an equation. There's an equation whose graph is right exactly the same as the x-axis. So there's like there's like a, an equation and if you graphed it, it would be right on top of the x-axis. Do you know what that equation is? Do you know? You should know. But you don't know, huh? Do you know? Do you know? Mm -hmm. No? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Do you know? <laughs> There's an equation that is the graph of this equation is the same as the x-axis. Do you know what that equation is? Zero. Oh, that's a number. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Eileen, you know? Oh. Marlene, you know? No. Okay. You know, Jackie? Mm -hmm. Oh. No. This is going to be a test question. So the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. And that's confusing, Yolanda, because, OK, so this is all confusing, right? y-intercepts, x equals 0. It's like opposite. x-intercepts, y equals 0. Like, you know, see what I mean? The x-axis is y equals 0. The equation of the <coughs> Akoba, what's the equation of the y-axis? E dot lo. That's right. Okay. So everything I've highlighted on this page, very, very likely to be a test question. Everything I highlighted right there is very likely to be something you're going to be asked on a test. Do you know why I tell you that? Ernesto, do you know I tell you that these questions, these things here, and these two things here, are <laughs> probably going to be on a test? Do you know why I tell you that? So we can practice. Two, yeah, two reasons. I want you to get a good grade, and number two, they are super important. Because if you can keep your head around these two things, then a lot of stuff will be easy for you. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Who should we? You can pick. Okay, I'll ask the question, and then Hokobo is going to pick who answers. You ready? The question is: How do you graph a linear equation? How do you make a graph of a linear equation? Who, who's going to answer that for us, Hokobo? <laughs> you can pick anybody you want. <laughs> Shh. Evelyn. Evelyn, good choice. Hi, Evelyn. Evelyn, how do you graph a linear equation? How do you gotta make the graph first. How, wait, what? You gotta make the graph. How do you graph a linear equation? Mm -hmm. By getting the two numbers and putting the, the x one first and then finding out where the y one goes. Okay, that's good. So I think you're saying, like, I think this is what you're saying. You figure out what number x is, right? Right. And then from that, you figure out what the number of the y is. Yeah. Okay, how many of those do you need? How many of these do you need for some equation before you can make your graph? How many? I didn't hear what you said. Three? Three. How do you know three? Oh, because it says right there. <laughs> Increíble. That's how you graph. We're going to highlight it too. Increíble. So until you learn, there are some shortcuts that will make this quicker and easier. Sometimes the numbers get ugly. But there's some number, there's some, some ways to make it quicker, quicker and easier. But if you're ever, ever stuck or confused, you do this. Yolanda, I've been teaching this, graphing linear equations for like... 12 years. And I've been teaching it at Cochise for 11, uh, twice a year for 11 years. 
and then in the high school. Uh, so like I've taught algebra one at least once every year, and for a lot of times I teach it five times, you know, five classes. So that let's say let's say for eight of those years I taught five times, I would be forty times in high school I've taught kids how to do this. Hmm. That's 150 kids each time. And then between all the colleges, I've taught this a lot, right? You want to know the number one mistake everybody makes all the time? After they learn some shortcuts, they forget this. And the shortcuts are going to get you stuck because the shortcuts don't always work. But this always works. This works forever and ever, amen. So when you get stuck with the shortcut or if you get confused, you do this. That. You do this. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, right there. Gabby, you do this. You do that. You connect a los puntos. You find three points. And then you connect the dots. Okay, you're going to try one. You ready? Ooh, we're going to have somebody come up to the document camera and do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You ready? This is going to be awesome. Oh, you, you weren't here on Thursday. You missed out. We get, You guys, they, they taught, the students taught the class on Thursday. Am I lying, Jackie? No, you're not lying. Oh, yeah. We put problems on the board. It was Yolanda's birthday, mm. and she got to do the most difficult problem for extra credit. Okay, so here's the one we're going to do. I want you to graph this. Hmm. We'll make it easy, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll even, we'll do this. 2x plus 2y equals 8. Ooh, so I'll, you guys should work together. You should definitely help each other out. And I'll give you a couple minutes, and then we'll talk about it. We will talk about it. Come on, Jackie. You're making me sad, Jackie. Daniela, you can't let your brother beat you on the next quiz, right? Because you know, I told you, like in 15 years at Thanksgiving, you guys are going to have your own families, you're going to show up for a big Thanksgiving dinner, and he's going to say, you remember? We took Matt together? You know that's going to happen. Right, Hokobo? Yeah. If you beat her, then that's what's going to happen. Oh, you have a question? number for x, like 2. Mm. So you would write it like, you know, right on the board so for like you. Mm -hmm. Mira la que genia. <laughs> Do you have it, Jackie? Um, we need three of them, right? Simon Limon. Ramon Hamon. But don't say Mamon, because that's not nice. Mm -hmm. Right, Eileen? Are you done, Daniela? Come on, Daniela. Don't be all wave on, huh? Mm -hmm. What's up, Marlene? 
6 plus 2 is 8, yeah. It says right. I know where I messed up because I plugged it in, so that's, I used this. Oh, yeah. So that's where I got it. Yeah. Okay. Eileen, you got it? Eileen, how do you come up with the answers? That's the question, right? Because, like, she got it. He got it. But how'd they come up with their answers? Because you know you need 3, right? How do you get three answers? How do you do it, Marlene? You found two, right? I was really happy how you found the two that you found, though. Those were really good. None of your business. She found the X and the Y intercept. She found, here's the two she found, okay? She found 0, 4, and 4, 0. Now, I don't know if she did it on purpose because this one right here is... Um, the y-intercept and this one is the x-intercept. I don't know if she did it like for that reason, but those are, but these are the x and y-intercept. Remember, when x is zero, that's a y-intercept, and when y is zero, that's an x-intercept. So it's one of those things you kind of have to study because it's easy to mix it up. So I don't know if Marlene found those for that reason, or if she just, you know, found them for other reasons because they're easy to figure out. But <laughs> I like when you put a zero for one number, because then that just is gone, so two times what is eight? When you put a zero for the other number, two times what is eight? That's all you gotta do. Yolanda, how did you find your answers? What did you do? I started trying out numbers. When you say try out numbers, what do you mean? Um, well, the reason I, I ask, I'm sorry to interrupt, the reason I'm asking is so that Evelyn can know what you did, and Jackie can know what you did, and Daniela can know what you did, and Gabby can know what you did. Well, I just kind of picked two, and so I did two times two is four, plus mm. two times two is four, so four plus four is eight. Well, so you picked a number for x. 
whatever came to your head. Just anything that like popped into your head, and then you figured out what Y was. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's how you do it. That's it. You pick a number. You can pick your favorite number. Don't pick my favorite number. Twenty-seven thousand two hundred ninety-two. Don't do that one. But just pick a small number, like four or one or something like that. Three. And then plug that in. So, like for example, let's say you picked five. Uh, right? Let's say X is 5. It just picked 5. You know where I got 5, Oscar? Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. So let's say you pick 5. Do you know where I got 5? Me either. Just floating around in my head with the two marbles that are also floating around in there. Sometimes they bang together and I get an idea and then I usually end up getting in trouble. Yeah. Ernesto, we just picked 5, right? Just picked it. No reason. But then, if you put 5 right there, like this, like this is what you do. Do you see? 2 times 5 is 10. 10, let's see here. You could solve this, right? Oh, wait, how do we solve that? Oh, yeah, subtract. 2y equals negative 2, so y is equal to negative 1. So that would give me the point 5, negative 1. That's how you do it. Now, you didn't pick a 5. You picked 2. Mm-hmm. And then you found 2. And you got that one too, right? Yeah. How did you get 2, 2? 2 and 2. Math and magic? Math magic, yeah. Oh. But how'd you get it? How'd you get this first number? Because it was the 2 of the x. Oh. So that just made you figure 2? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to put a number. I want you to figure out what the other number is. Ready? We're going to call on somebody. Ready, Eileen? Okay, mm-hmm. Eileen, you look really excited. Here we go. If x is 1, what does y have to be? Dun, 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 If x is 1, what does y have to be? What do you think it is? 3. 3? Do you guys agree with her? What do you think, Eileen? She said if x is 1, then she says y has to be 3. Mm-hmm. So that would be 2 times 1 plus 2 times 3 equals 8. Is that true? 2 times 1 plus 2 times 3, does that equal 8? 2 plus 6 is 8. Yeah, that's true. So if x is 2, y is 3. There's one, two, three answers. Yeah, Ernesto? Uh-huh. Well, let's see if that works. Let's see if 3 and 1 works. Sometimes you can switch them like this, but sometimes you can't. It depends on the equation. So let's see if that one works, Jackie. You ready? Here's all you got to do. You check it. So that's 6, yeah, plus 2. I think you're right. You know what the only thing you can mess up after this is counting. X goes this way and y goes this way so you just don't count wrong and you're good so one two three four five one two three four five uh, you don't actually need graph paper when we take a test or if you have to do a really accurate graph I'll give you like graph paper but for just practice you can just draw them they won't be perfectly accurate but they'll be pretty close so we got five negative one which is right here we got 2, 2, which is right there. We got 1, 3, which is right there. And, oh, we also had 3, 1, which is right there. So let's connect the Los Puntos. It's not perfect because it's drawn by hand, but it's pretty close. There you go. <laughs> Dang, Marlene. Marlene, can you handle this? You sure, Marlene? Yeah? Because yeah? here's the deal. What's next Tuesday? April 2nd? April 3rd.
What do you think, Beartooth? Are you going to be able to handle it? Okay. Okay, this time, this time I didn't have anybody come up and do this one, but for the next one we are. Are you going to tell your brother or are you not going to tell your brother? Are you going to tell him? Okay. All right. So this time somebody is coming up. Hmm. Let's do woo, x minus y equals 0. You try. Three answers and a graph. Dun, 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 dun. by a radioactive mass spider or something? What's going on with you, Jackie? You're killing it. You want to do, you want to do it? Sure. All right. Jackie's going to do it. I'm going to make it pretty, though. Oh, you can't help. Everything you touch, it turns beautiful, Jackie. <laughs> right, Jackie? Where's the other thing to make it pretty? Oh, that works. Like that. Somewhat like that. Beautiful. That's what Jackie got. I think Jackie's right. Do you guys agree or disagree? You agree? So it's not that bad, right? The hard part is just coming up with answers. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're a little tricky. But you gotta do like Yolanda said, pick easy numbers. Yeah? Should we do one more? Probably a good idea because we have a quiz in a week, right? Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more and then um, I'll give you guys like a couple practice problems you can try. And then if you want, we can go over them on Thursday. And might be the case that some of those practice problems are going to be on your quiz for next Tuesday. Maybe not, but maybe. Wouldn't that be something? Okay, you ready, Jackie? Ready. Okay. Gabby's ready? Okay, get, uh, oh gosh, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Ready? It's different.
Tikvela. Yolanda, if you can switch it up a little bit and you still know what to do, then you know. Oh, bear tooth. You tired too, bear tooth? Yeah. Why are you tired? Can't sleep at night? No, it's just, it's, I'm not in a crash afterwards. Oh. I drank like one full monster. And I had an energy and now I'm just I'm feeling the crash. Crash and burn. Whatever number you want. But it has to be that if you put X here and Y there and you do the math, that it's equal. Yeah? That makes sense? Usually, wait, how did you do, what did you do before? Like, like, quick, don't, don't look at the equation. How did you do them before? What did you do? I just picked the number, plugged it in. Pick the number for what? For X. Okay, do that. Pick a number for X. How are we going to know what it is? Three. Three, okay. Put three for X. What's Y equal? Um, six. Okay. Would that work? Is six equal two times three? Yeah. Okay. Also, we're just making up our own. Also, is a bear. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Making it harder than it really is. Yes, you were. Yes. Yeah. I just love doing that. <laughs> Story <laughs> of your life, huh? Yeah. Like, no, it can't be that easy. Yeah, it's that easy. <laughs> Jackie, since you got the last one right, you get to pick who's doing this one, Jackie. Oh boy. It's a lot of power. A lot of authority, Jackie. <laughs> oh, Danielle is a good choice. You know why? Because no. she shook her head, no, please God, no. <laughs> you saw that, right? You yeah. see the desperation in her face? She's like, no! <laughs> What's the matter, Danielle? I don't think you're done. I'm sorry? Okay, yeah, give him time. What's the matter, Daniela? Are you confused with this, or are you just being Waivona? <laughs> Both. Both, right. Yeah, one leads to the other, huh? Ay, ay, ay. You know, even if you're feeling lazy, this isn't just for school, but for everything, even when you're feeling lazy, if you still do enough, it doesn't make it horrible. I mean, sometimes you're just not feeling it. You still got to do a little bit. No. True story. Oh, so you think, uh, yeah, so we'll let him finish. So Yolanda, the I thing I did, the baton death march? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was to memorialize this, uh, this uh, prison of war camp that the Japanese had in the Philippines. There were about, about 10,000 Philippines and American soldiers in mind. The thing about the Japanese? They were way more cruel than the Nazis. Way more cruel. Way more cruel. And part of the reason why, part of it's just cultural. They're a very harsh society. But the other part is, they. So imagine if you were a Japanese soldier and you got sent overseas to a foreign country to invade and take over, they didn't have to provide you with food or supplies. You had to go and get your own. But then if you had prisoners, you were supposed to take care of them. Too. So you got to feed yourself and you got to feed them. So, long story, very long story short, towards the end of the war, when it, the Japanese knew they were going to lose, they had a real problem on their hands because they were doing all kinds of war crimes against these prisoners. 
and since they were loose, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the loser gets the short end of the stick, and they knew they were going to be possibly no, no, the they were all going to be the So then they had to figure out what to do with all these prisoners. They couldn't let them go. They couldn't just kill them. <laughs> so they had to make them die. So they marched them for 10 straight days through the jungles in the Philippines. And it's a one of the survivors was gave a presentation that the you know, stuff that he told he was a prisoner of war for Japan for 45 months. And the stuff that the stories he told were just like mine. Yeah, almost 40 years. And he told stories about uh, before he was captured, he was working with these, these guerrilla warriors in the Philippines, and they were headhunting him. And Yes, some of the atrocities that he had seen he witnessed, and some of the lucky experiences he had for and uh, so on three occasions, uh, women saved his life, nurses. Okay, well, shit. So you're just one was he was he was he was dying of dysentery. The a nurse knew he could be cured with just some simple medicine and some food. He was in a hospital bed, and there was somebody next to him who had tuberculosis. She knew that his number was next. They were going to execute him because the Japanese were just using any excuse to kill somebody. So she switched it. She just switched the main plan. Yeah, so his family had notified that he could kill. Whoa. So he had his death certificate. And uh, yeah. after the, the atomic bomb was dropped in Nagasaki, he was over there. On top of everything else. Yeah, well, yeah. So the, they made the prisoners of war. So everybody was getting radiation poison. Now he didn't get it. And then he was in a cage. Um, they basically kept him in cages. And they were giving like four cup of rice a day. That's it. No water. The only water they would get would be water that ran through the dirt into the puddles in the cage. And they were, they were, they were they was, he was saying they would like pray for tree, uh, for leaves to fall down. So, they, so anyway, uh, he said he was in a cage with five other people, and all of them got tuberculosis and died of so then in the, on the march, it was a marathon night march, and it's, it's like uphill, and it's in sand and rocks and dirt, so it's really hard, it's really hot, and at mile 14, I only did it for mile, I just went there, she went last year, so I'm going to help her out. Yeah, it was our anniversary too. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have mile 14, like 12, 26 parts there. So I, I got 12 more to go. I hate this. Like, like soldiers that were in shape and were like on the side of the trail and going up in the ocean. People's feet were all torn up. They had medical tents all over the place. They had a lot of medical tents, like shoes, cut the feet up. So I'm sitting there thinking, how can I get out of this without being a total man? So I'm like, maybe I could, you know, sprain my ankle. Uh, and I was just like, kind of like, I don't know, because that would bring everybody down. But just in my head, I'm like, oh, I think this is so, so bad. And then so I looked over, and there's this guy. Had to get him with exes he, 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 his leg was amputated the length of thigh. So he had yeah. yeah. his prosthetic leg like off. Six. Six. This is even when you want to stop. So you can put it back on. Yeah. And it's yours. So I saw that, and I'm like, my feet hurt. We were walking, it took about two minutes. So, so it's almost embarrassing to say this, uh, to not compare to those guys, but I'm a disabled veteran. Both my ankles and left were really bad. Just like so, especially in the morning, it's so hard. I didn't walk very well. In the morning, I heard my daughter, she was with us, and my wife, and they couldn't move. You're uh, so sore. And I was fine. Right? And so I get up and I'm walking around and I'm like, I'm just slipping like normal, is all I said. Right? And my daughter was mad. She's like, she's like, yeah, well, I'll be fine in a week, but you're still going to be like that forever. That's why it's very useful. That's why I use one tool. That sounds unbelievable. It was like a humbling experience. It sucked, but at the same time, it was like. 
I don't know. It was a really special experience. Better be not, because there's a pattern? No, we didn't really. We mostly learned about what happened in Europe, not really what happened with the Japanese. They were they were harsh. And the rest of the Eastern cultures, they hated the Japanese because they were so incredibly cruel. So what made the guy surrender? So the guy, he was actually like, <laughs> mod, he would be like modern day special forces. So he was training these these guerrilla cannibals and stuff, right? Uh, how to fight the Japanese. Yeah. And the Japanese wanted him to surrender, so they would start killing civilians. They'd bring him to like the edge of the jungle and just execute him. And then, uh, so the thing that got him to surrender is they took a young mother with her baby and she was breastfeeding him. They took the baby, threw it in the air, and caught it on the baby. And so that's when they finally said, okay, uh, they surrendered. The stuff that surrendered. Yeah, you said that came out of that. I'm not sure. Just like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Who's doing it, Jackie? Evelyn! Ooh, wow. All right, good choice. <laughs> you do do though, huh? Yeah. That's good. Evelyn's going to be all right. You got this, Evelyn. I know, I do. I'm just really tired. <laughs> so when, what years was this? Um, it's during World War II. Okay. Um, I think we actually probably started... So, do I just write it out, Mister? Sure. Like, what? What? My answers or like the whole like thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like Jackie said. Like Jackie said. So. And so. One of the survivors, he's 102. He's and six. And then. The room is like totally packed. He was dead. Oh, crap. I'm confused. Yeah. It's such a weird experience. I'm still like processing it. Oh, yeah. Who was the Two and four. Still trying to get my head Two and four? And I knew about it because actually one of my wife's relatives was one of the people who survived it. She's from the Philippines, so he was not sure. And that's not hard. That's not hard, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got it made, right? Yeah. yeah. So your kids are driving you crazy, so what, right? Yeah. Right. Evelyn, that's beautiful. It's kind of crooked, but yeah. It's all a shrekko over there? Yeah. But oh, that's okay. I made it as best as I could. You did? That's yeah. funny. Great minds think in the same gutter. Right, hey, Jackie? Okay. It's going to be big numbers, your graphics are yeah, all big, over the place. Exactly right. Don't, don't pick big numbers, pick small ones. Right. The method, like the way you say that, it's called the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Okay. Watch, I'll give you five problems to practice. Gabby, you don't have to practice them. But some or all or none might be on your quiz in a week. So here's the instructions. You should write down the instructions so you don't get confused. Eileen should probably, list, probably be listening right now. Graph by finding three solutions. Mm. Let's do 3x. That's an x. Minus y equals 2. Ooh, that's a weird one. Let's do 2x plus y equals 9. Let's do those, Jackie. 